Hey there, this is Angie. I just thought I would pop on here quickly and I managed to keep finding the right spot for the shadow when I lean back. So I'm having some difficulty with the lighting. I'm getting a lot of glare off my forehead. I don't really have a whole lot of powder on or anything like that. And I'm suddenly realizing I need to because hello head beam. So I have a soft box, but it's too bright. I got to figure out where to set it. And I, in case you can't tell, I've got natural light coming in through the back that's giving a really cool glow effect, but dang, y'all, dang. So <laughs> I wanted to pop on quickly and just do some filming on planning and how I'm using my planners. So I did get some more things from cloth and paper to just help me as I plan. I got some of their, ooh, got a, got an air and tear there. I got some of their little stickers, got corners, hexagons, some squares, some dots, and some tape in the color saddle. I like this, but I would like this much better in nude. They were out of stock in nude when I got these. Saddle is fine. Uh, in terms of transparency, they are transparent. Problem I have is that they are so dark that a lot of the fine points that I write with really don't show up too well through them. It's fine in using the small ones as I use for appointments and things like that. But when I want to use the tape over something I want to see, again, the fine points have a harder time showing up through them than more of the medium points, which can be frustrating. I also just received, I got some post-it notes from them because I really want to try these out. And I love the colors from cloth and paper. I love, I'm not even going to call it minimalistic because it's not that it's minimalistic. It's that it's aesthetically pleasing and non-jarring to the eye. So I am pretty big on colorful post-its and have been for a long time. But as I'm trying to use up what I had because I sort of became a post-it hoarder, what I'm finding is I really want to simplify and make it less about the post-its or less about the pens and more about the products that I'm using and loving the products and the quality. So I got two post-its in I got one in the rose and one in the nude quite frankly they are so close actually in color that if I said I preferred one it would be the nude because the nude is a warmer shade and the eyeballs just seem to like that better I also picked up and I just want to flip to my note here really quickly so I say this right so glam girl planners on Etsy has some beautiful dashboard designs so here is one that I received I think you can get it as a digital too, where you can change what it says, but it, what I purchased just says hustle. They're really nicely laminated. I enjoy that. And then for where my planner will start in the fall, I got this really cute, really basic fall girl with her Starbucks cup right down here. Absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. It's probably all the decoration that I'm going to really have in here in terms of dashboards, but it keeps me on point. I also did pick up some media content manager sheets. So these guys right here from cloth and paper. I want to get better at listing, realistically listing things out for videos and making sure that when I'm posting things in the description, which I kind of neglect at this point, that I'm posting things accurately and getting the information in there that I want so that when you pull it up to see it, you've got it there, uh, whether it's links or other or other things so you know as, as I reference cloth and paper or you know glam girl that I have their links there so you can follow those easily if you like what you're seeing I'm not affiliated with anyone I'm not sponsored by anyone so realistically what I'm doing is just the, making sure that I hit hit the highlights and do the tracking that I need so I have also been using cloth and papers vertical spread I like it. I have figured out how to make it work for me and something that I also picked up are these undated hourly sheets for weekly. Figured out pretty quickly that if I put my schedule on them each day for for the timing for things that I'm going to be, I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to go nuts is the honest and safest thing I can say about it because I sit down and I look at it and it's literally from about 5 a.m. To, to 10 p.m. as I have it set now of just non-stop go, 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 go do things. 
five days a week with as much crammed in on the weekends as I could possibly cram in and just writing it out and looking at at what I did for the first day alone is it was jarring and made my brain hurt so I don't know if I'm going to be using these I think what I might do is I might save these and work them in maybe maybe next year somewhere I, what I might also do are for the days where I need more in the planner, I might actually insert in the middle of the week. Maybe I will get some undated daily sheets and put in daily for things that I actually do need. I actually do need to, to log for a particular day in notes. It's a thing. We're working through it. So I made my own, made my own tab to here to easily quick to think quick, I can't speak, to easily get to things that aren't schedule related. It's got, so I've used the Danielle Laporte Desire Map Planner, which I'm also still using almost as a journaling practice and being able to fill things in and thoughts in since I have it. I will probably, and I say probably go to a weekly for that for that next next year because I do like having a separate place where that I'm using more as a journal and more as my personal growth as opposed to trying to put it all in the planner. I, I want the planner for me to be more about actual planning and ideas and content creation because I feel like I am very much search er right now and kind of hitting a point where I am losing inspiration for things. And I don't want that to happen. So when we flip to that, I have some creative notes and ideas. So planner inserts that, that I like, where I'm getting things for my planner. I, uh, there are some things that I see that I kind of want, I have here on a cloth and paper insert what I'm doing with the planner stuff. I use Filofax as the rings and the Filofax. I have our 25 millimeter. I wanted the 35 millimeter. I purchased a kit to be able to change out the rings from what should have been a reputable place off of Amazon. It had great reviews. I've seen other YouTubers talk about them. I got them and it was very clear that the rings were not new. They would not the last two rings would not close all the way and the mechanism that actually you would use to open the rings you should never open your rings by pulling them you should always use the mechanism to open them that was was very clearly not going to work and super loose and I was just like yeah I think somebody saved the packaging for something that they had and they're trying to resell it so that was a no-go for me I also took the pages so for the vertical weekly there are note pages that are numbered that come at the end. I took those and moved those to my notes section because I probably won't use them just as part of the monthly, but if I can actually use them, whether it's for lists or for working on ideas, I thought that was fantastic. And then I did pick up monthly expense sheets. I really want to get in tune with what is truly my monthly expenses versus what is just spending money randomly, not even paying attention to what you're spending money on. and really sitting down and looking at, am I spending money in places where I actually want to spend money and on things I want to spend money on, or am I blowing through money that is better elsewhere because I'm just not thinking about it, I'm just spending, spending, spending. So the first thing I put on for this month is is my doTERRA monthly order, which I'm also reevaluating how I spend on that. There's pretty much a more than a year's worth of monthly expense sheets, depending on how many expenses you have. They are double-sided. So if you have more than fits on a, a page, you have a second page, or you could have a month each page, again, depending on what your expenses look like. And I am working through that. I have, I also picked up a little notebook here. So my target had for $3, you could get three notebooks just slides in really, really nicely where the loose, sorry, it's hooked on something, where where the loose, where the loose notepad was in here. And it's just uh, this one, so one is lined. This particular one is a dot grid, which doesn't bother me. I just wanna be able to use it to capture quick ideas and things like that that I'm not necessarily putting on the actual note paper. So like I'm out and about, I wanna pull this book out and just be able to quickly write something down I can I can sit down and I can do that. So I am excited there. I am definitely, so I had talked about this before. I took the little zipper clip off and I am using this little pouch to go in my front pocket to hold my Filofax tabs and 
my Filofax, oh, my Filofax post-its. I don't really care. I don't particularly care for these yellow ones. I don't remember if they don't stick well, but there's there's a re there's a reason I wasn't using them. But I do want to use the flags so this way I see them and have them out. I have my stickers in there. I have my half sheets in there as well. I still haven't used a half sheet. I think mostly because I kind of <laughs> I kind of forget about them, so I pulled them from the back where I had them, and I'm going to put them in the pouch as well. Just flipping back to my month there. And then I'm going to, I usually don't put post-its actually in my planner. I did see that some people like kind of pull them in half and stick and stick them in, but I don't like any ridges or notches in my, in my planner as I'm trying to write. So I'm very reluctant to do that because I just feel like I'm going to do it and I'm going to regret it. Sorry. I have a, a cable here that's getting angry as I'm trying to move it over. So I'm going to work through it that way, see how I like it. Again, I really, I'm loving the nude, and I think if I get more stickers, I'm going to get them in nude. I was debating over whether or not I wanted to get the cloth and paper subscription bundle. I do see that monthly they are giving away those vertical, the vertical dated inserts. I, I can see where if you're the kind of person that doesn't plan out ahead as far as I do in some cases, or you would like getting that in the subscription box. For me, it would be a waste because I already have that. Could I, in theory, in my in my other Philo facts, use those as journal pages? Absolutely, if I wasn't already using my Danielle Laporte planner as journaling pages. So to me, that just seems like that would be a waste. I'm really interested in the pens. There's some other neat stuff that they put in and some things that I would love to have. I just don't know that it's worth purchasing the, subscri blah, the subscription. At the same time, I feel like when I go out to the cloth and paper website, they are out of stock a lot of the time. And I think the reason they're out of stock is they're super popular. And this last weekend, we did just have the, I'm going to call it the stationary convention in Chicago, which I'm near. And it could just be that they were out of stock because they were, they were, they had stock, but they were keeping it for that particular event, and maybe they're going to be restocking soon. Again, I, I don't know. I just the, the cost of it kind of makes me go, if there are things that I'm looking at in these unboxings that I already know I'm not going to, to use, do I really want to go with that? They also have their Penspirations box. It's just the pens, and I'm thinking about, about doing that, but you can prepay for three months of that, and it, it automatically renews. Whereas the, the stationery and the Penspirations is, you can prepay for six months. Cost-wise, that's, the subscription is, is really, for me and for how I use this stuff, as long as I'm using it, it makes sense financially to just do it that way and have it show up and to use it. They do also put some really cool things into the box that I could actually see some value with and things that I would, I would again use. So I'm having a really hard time with it. I'm also... I have sitting in front of me my pen holder. I'm going to do a separate video on my pens, but I was actually playing with some today that I have. That I was just really, really disappointed with. I like the erasable pens when it comes to putting things in my calendar because I can erase if I need to erase. The erasable markers don't erase as well. I found that if I left them, I had one that I left uncapped for just a few minutes while I was working less than five minutes when I came back to it. I really had to work to get it to work because the tip had started to dry out already. And that's really not cool to me. So I can see those coming out of the box and just being special to use. Now special to use means they're going to sit somewhere until I finally decide that I'm just going to throw them out. I have some Bic pens that I use that are not erasable that are medium tip that I really do like and enjoy. But I just... Mm, I, just, I like pens and I want to experience new pens and a pen that I actually did purchase off of cloth and paper. It's a Mona Me pen in pink. I'm really liking, I'm liking how fine it is. I'm liking how I can kind of switch up how I write with it. It just seems like there's value inherently in the Penspiration box for me, even though some of the pens are going to come in black ink, which I really, really don't use, don't enjoy using. But if I like, if I like it enough, from what I'm seeing from the Penspiration boxes, I can either find it in a blue color or in a color that I want, or I can buy refills for it. 
which I love pens that take refills because if you can refill, sorry, my computer wanted to turn off. If you can refill, then that's great because now you have a pen that's not disposable. Now you have a pen that you can keep using over and over again. I'm a big fan of that too. Uh, pens that I have in my purse, a pen in my purse, a pen here, I'll show you quickly in my planner. This is a cross. It's a, I forget what it's called, but it's, it's their super thin guy. I have it in red in my purse. I mean, I, I like, and I use these. The problem is they're not, because they're so thin, they have a tendency to not be comfortable for writing, writing with, if you're sitting and writing for hours on end. So if I'm writing notes or doing planning, they're really not the pens that I gravitate towards. Whereas my frictions have the little, the little silicone nubby that makes it really comfortable to write with. So I will, like I said, I'm going to talk about pens in a, in a different uh, in a different video because I want to kind of get into more detail on the pens that I have on my desk, in my drawer, that I carry with me everywhere in my, my pen case and go that route. But I just, again, figured I'd jump on here quickly. I'm going to pop off. I've got some things to run around and do. I, I, I don't know, guys. I You tell me in the comments, is it worth doing a stationary subscription box? I've seen some others that are really cool and really cute and colorful, and I'm just like... Yeah, they are, but those things are all going to sit for me. I'm not going to use them because as cute and as colorful, sorry, my cat's climbing into a box, and as lovely as they are, they're not my jam, and I find that I have a massive sticker collection because I'm not using them. As lovely as they might be, they, they distract me when I'm planning. I don't need them in my notes. I only need certain stickers because I gravitate towards certain stickers over and over again to mark things. And to me, that makes the cloth and paper subscription box just, again, head and shoulders stand out. And could I use could I use those pages, you know, that they they put in the box, the, the vertical pages? Could I use them for something else? And that's something I'm really examining as I'm trying to work through and use up other notebooks that I have, and really assessing how I'm using things. So I, I'm at a loss. I don't know. Again, tell me, is is it worth it? How are you use if you're getting something in, in the subscription box, you're getting the cloth and paper subscription, and it's something that might be duplicative that you already have in your collection or using or already are using in your planner. How are how are you using that additional? Are you using it or is it something that's just going in the waste bin? Because things that go in the waste bin make me angry. <laughs> but uh, so that's that's really where I'm at. And I don't know guys again tell me tell me what your thoughts are how, how are you using it and we will go from there I'm gonna call it for this one I got some more things that I'd like to film today that I may not I want to do a what's in my bag mostly because I put a lot of stuff in my bag and a lot of stuff that has to do with you know how you're working more efficiently how you're using your planners what you're carrying with you, what might be necessary, what might not be necessary, what might sit in my bag and never get used and really need to come out versus what's in my bag that I use every day, all day, constantly. And on that note, I'm going to call it. I will see you on the next one. I'm just going to look over. Ah, I didn't plug my mouse in.